Hi, everybody, and thanks again for joining us live here at the Guidebook Connect Insights Lounge. This is Kate Warnock, and I'm bringing to, to you all Mr. Rocco Perla. Rocco, welcome to the interview. Great to be here. Thank you. So, Rocco, you have um, a panel today, and I was hoping you could maybe recap for us what you'll be speaking to and some of your top points. Great. So we're going to be talking about really kind of the historic opportunity we have right now in healthcare um, to integrate social needs into medical care. Uh, we think about some of the programs that have been launched at a national scale through the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services mm -hmm. and some of the other large payers that are really excited about the opportunities to weave medical care in with um, care coordination that links to patient social needs. Just tremendous opportunity. We're going to talk a lot about how to actually implement and execute a high quality uh, social needs screening and navigation program. Uh, when we talk about care coordination, which we all hear a lot about as being kind of one of the uh, anchor points for health reform, mm. how do you actually maneuver the space between the health system and the social services? That's an area that health, health leads have spent 20 years navigating with our clinical partners, and we're going to share some of our insights, our tools, and, uh, and really some of the inspirational stories behind that work. You know, Rocco, I was, I was doing a little bit of research on you before we were speaking today, and you're so passionate about this, and I know that you bring so much expertise to this space. Why is, do you think it's taken the industry so long to really start looking holistically at the individual? That's a great question. I think we're just now seeing, um, it's, it's almost like a perfect storm. So with the pressures of, of, on healthcare in terms of finance and economics, the issue of sustainability is front and foremost. Mm -hmm. So we've known for a while that only about 10% of health outcomes are attributed directly, directly to medical care. 70%, a whopping 70% are associated with the social and environmental factors. Um, and so when we think about sustainability long term, we just can't ignore those right. anymore. And I think health reform has really been driving that. The other pressure that we're facing is just an increase in the number of patients that were previously uninsured now actually gaining coverage through the marketplace and the exchanges. So there's this incredible new market that we can sort of leverage and tap and think creatively about um, you know, providing better service to those that typically haven't had access to care. And I think the last point is we're now seeing a growing evidence base around the impact of effectively addressing social needs. So if we can actually keep patients and members of the population healthy, they don't have to come back into the healthcare system. That reduces costs and it's also better for the patients. All right, so let's, let's key off that response then. You know, we've seen, um, or how have social need interventions risen to the top of the reform agenda in the past six months? Well, I mean, with the past six months, people have actually referred to it as a historic time uh, with the two signature programs coming out of Medicare. So these are programs, uh, both the Accountable Health Communities Model and the Comprehensive Primary Care Initiative Plus which are extension programs off of uh, programs that CMS has run in the past. The potential for these programs to impact millions of patients and beneficiaries is unprecedented. So in the, in the past where we would focus primarily on direct medical care, so for example, a patient comes in with asthma, we'll treat the asthma, we'll do a diagnostic workup, but if in fact the reason the patient is there is because they live in substandard housing with problems with mold or cockroaches, I mean, that's the reality of a lot of the patients that we deal with. And so by addressing the root cause of disease and poor health out in the community, that translates into cost savings and better care for patients. You know, we just had Karen Van Zandt here with uh, CareSource on, and she was talking also about social determinants of health and really the challenge that the industry faces, not only in maybe asking the right questions so that we understand what that environment, those living conditions might be, but in making that information capture then accessible to all points right. along the care continuum. So, how do you work within an industry that is still struggling with that interoperability hurdle? Right, so it's, it's not easy, uh, but the key is really integration. And I think what we're seeing across the healthcare landscape is payers, providers, and those in the public health sector are all coming together and realizing there's a shared accountability. So it's not just one entity that's actually gonna solve this problem. We talk a lot about care coordination, coordinating patients' visits throughout the health system. Mm -hmm. It's actually time for us to coordinate how we do our work and how we deliver health care. That's a good, that's a good uh, little pivot there, isn't it? To, uh, to kind of be a little bit more introspective to that's deliver right. the right kind of care stuff. So. You know, so Rocco, why are social need interventions gaining attention from payers now more than ever? I think you've probably already touched on this, but let's spend a little more time there. No, I think it's worth revisiting. I think if we look at the factors that are driving that sort of movement in the market, we've got historic health reform legislation, we've got increased consumer engagement through the exchanges, we've got a growing recognition that if we continue to ignore the social determinants of health, we aren't actually going to achieve a sustainable healthcare system that's patient-centered and equitable, which is what the Institute of Medicine calls us to do. Um, so 
again, it's really that perfect storm, and we're looking through our work at Health Leads and our clinical partners to close that loop to bring everyone together in service of the patient. Okay, so let's let's get real then. What are what are the, what needs to happen in order for these things really to start to come to That's fruition? Right. So, in addition to working together collaboratively. I would say the primary driver here is, is actually screening patients when they come into a health system or through health plans. Uh, the health services um, research community is recognizing that in order to make gains, we have to collect data. So at the point of care, we need to collect data. Health systems, health plans, hospitals need to start screening. If we don't screen, we don't have any data. And so we're literally flying blind right now when it comes to that 70% of the driver of health and cost. With all the data we have in the healthcare system, right. that just can't, that's just not acceptable. So it's not necessarily, it doesn't be, have to be a huge high tech leap that we're taking, it's now just adding maybe some more essential questions to that, that point of contact that we have right. with the individual to make sure that we're getting that whole picture. And, and I would even annotate that a little bit, it's not asking more questions, it's asking the questions in the first place. Okay, fair, yeah. fair. All right, so Rocco, anyone who uh, is going to do any research on you like I did to prepare for this interview, sees that you have been a consummate innovator within the system, but that's not always an easy thing to do. What advice can you share for those folks who might be you know, looking to kind of break into the health industry, to be disruptive, to change the system? What's the right way to go about it? Focus on execution. Um, there are plenty of theories and ideas and, and hunches and those are great, but if we don't begin to actually execute and think about um, the dynamics of integration, that's where most innovations sort of crash and burn. Right. It's, it's at the point of delivery and execution and really thinking about uh, the systems that we're engaging in. So you have found that the right way to do that, obviously, then not only finding the right things to fix, but probably getting that alignment so that you can deliver too. So do you have advice that way? Yeah, I, I think um, the primary driver for success in terms of alignment is working uh, with everyone, all the stakeholders that are involved in this in this uh, in this situation, primarily those that are um, on the public health side and in the community the community service side, they sort of feel alienated at times. Mm. Um, and those on the on the delivery side, the healthcare delivery side, are, are trying to figure out how to better connect with those entities. So figuring out who the key stakeholders are and connecting the dots. That's the primary. Right. Focus so plenty of opportunity there in this space for someone who has really looked to make looked to make a change and a difference like you have in your career. Yeah. Yes, thank you. All right, well, Rocco Perla, thank you so much for joining us here at the Guybo Connect Insights Lounge. We're going to be up next with another interview in just a moment. Thank you.